This Week in Connecticut with Dennis House starts now. Welcome to This Week in Connecticut. Greetings, everyone. I'm Dennis House. Connecticut is approaching some serious drought conditions as our state needs rain badly. Plus, fact-checking the debate. Also, the history of mental health in Connecticut and celebrating what has become one of the biggest attractions in our state. A worsening drought in Connecticut. It affects everybody around us. It affects the animals, it affects the people, it affects your lawns and gardens. A lack of rain, scorching temperatures. What can the state do as these bone dry conditions wear on? We're gonna be reviewing uh, about nine different, what we call triggers, uh, looking at fire danger, looking at precipitation, groundwater. We all agree that Dick Wilberthal needs to go. I'm the conservative, she's center left. Boy, it feels like there may be three candidates, but only two campaigns. You heard where they stand during our exclusive debate. Now we're fact-checking the three Republicans running for the U.S. Senate. Tackling mental health with the help of history. It's been happening for hundreds of years, um, and that's a commonality we can share. The new exhibit in Connecticut exploring our common struggles. And another honor for the home of the Hartford Yard Goats. We have the best fans, and I, and I know a lot of the teams say that, but our fans just love coming out. The experience is like no other. First up on this week, the lead from wildfires out west to lower lake and river levels here in Connecticut. Drought conditions are creating and could cause some very serious problems in the future. Your state government is set to take action. That's in a moment. But first, News 8 meteorologist Ashley Baylor joins us with some drought insight. And Ashley, thanks so much for being with us today. Of I want course. to ask you first of all, what exactly is a drought? So a drought is a lack of moisture that affects people, it affects animals, it affects vegetation over a sizable area. And of course, this is not the first time we've seen a drought in Connecticut. This has happened before. It happened just a couple of years ago. So we have been through this multiple times. As you look ahead at the next eight days or so, what does it mm -hmm. look like? We're not looking at a lot of moisture. What we really need at this point is we really need one or two days of a good soaking rain because if you you've gone out there and you've tried to maybe water just some patches of grass that have seen better days, it doesn't even soak in. It kind of just sits on the surface. So we need the rain to consistently come down, soak into the ground, and really help with that lack of moisture. Again, it affects everybody around us. It affects the animals. It affects the people. It affects your lawns and gardens. It affects the golf courses out there. It affects the trees. Even the trees get stressed out because think about it. This time of year, you have people that go blueberry picking. They want to pick apples eventually. So it's not good that we have this lack of moisture going into a season where people want to be fruit picking. But here's the funny thing about that, is that when you have peaches and pears and watermelons, they actually become more flavorful and more sweet with the lack of moisture. So it's kind of a silver lining, if you will. And what about the forest fire danger? You know, the forest fire danger, we talk about a high fire danger. You see that more in the spring and in the fall when the humidity isn't as high. So yes, while things are dry out there and we don't want to see any fires get started. We're not as prone this time of year because the humidity is usually higher. It's when you get very low humidity and those dry conditions in the wind that get that higher, give us that higher fire danger. And as I understand, so if it rains heavily after a period of drought, you can also get flooding because the ground is hard, right? Right. So it just kind of runs off. It doesn't give it a chance to really soak in. So in some places where we've, you know, maybe had some of those thunderstorms that roll through, which seems to have been happening for the northern part of the state a little more than the southern part, uh, what happens is it just doesn't get to soak in. It just kind of runs off. Sometimes you can get into a situation where you get flash flooding because of that, because, you know, the water's just not going anywhere. So, yeah, it really can affect us, affects us in so many ways. And especially when it comes to agriculture, you're going to see a big effect there. I was at an event just a few weeks ago where there were some farmers there and there was one man, he normally gets 4,000 bales of hay during the summer. This year because of the drought, only 1,400. Wow. So that's going to carry into next year for those farmers that need to feed their alpacas and their cows and their horses. What do you say to people who think the end is near, the apocalypse is coming <laughs> because there's no rain and it's worse than ever before? You know, it seems worse because we're just 
we, we see it more in social media. We see it more on air of what's going on out in the Midwest, what's going on in California. It's not really relevant to what's going on here in New England. While we hate to see it, especially with Lake Mead being at the lowest sure. it's ever been before. One thing that really has affected them more is because they didn't have the runoff from the snow melt in the mountains. The mountains didn't get as much snow this year, so they didn't have that same runoff that they would in years past. So it does seem more extreme in other parts of the country for sure. But for us here in New England, we've been through this before. For, and we will come out of this a lot faster than other places will. You always make it very understandable for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ashley Bailey, thanks. Goal. Thanks so much. Now, the state is watching the drought situation very closely. Joining us now to talk about this is the Undersecretary of the Office of Policy and Management, Martin Heft, who chairs the Interagency Drought Work Group. And Martin, thanks so much for being with us here today. Good afternoon, and thanks. I want to ask you, first of all, what is the state's response to the drought situation? The interagency drought work group is set up through the Water Planning Council, and we look at, you know, the Connecticut drought response is a plan that was uh, revised in 2018, which has five stages to it. And currently the state is at a stage two, which is an incipient drought stage. Uh, which I kind of call our early awareness stage before we get into stage three, which is actually a moderate drought and our first actually drought stage, um, in which case the state would be in a drought. Martin, what kind of problems are you hearing about from people across the state in terms of the drought? But right now, fortunately, we're not hearing of, you know, particular issues. Um, the 2020 drought that we had, we were hearing of uh, towns like Voluntown down in the eastern uh, part of the state of wells running dry. Um, we had agriculture issues. We had a federal disaster um, declaration done because of agriculture crops. Um, we're not at those stages yet, so but we are anticipating that we could be moving towards those if we don't receive the needed rain, you know, um, in order to keep us out of the drought. So if we don't get rain soon, what? Kind of action will the state take? The interagency drought work group meets on a monthly basis or more as needed. Um, our next scheduled meeting is for uh, August 4th, in which case we're going to be reviewing uh, about nine different what we call triggers, uh, looking at fire danger, looking at precipitation, groundwater, stream flow, the um, the drought monitors that go on, and we look at those to see where are we in conditions. Things don't, you know, progress better, and unfortunately, and you've heard from uh, your weather forecasters that, you know, next seven days, next 10 days do not look great for receiving precipitation. So we most likely may be moving into that stage three, into a drought, an official drought stage. Does the state have the authority to tell people not to water their lawns or to cut back on water use, or is that a town by town issue? There is in the drought plan under stage three, it's more of an advisory and voluntary effort that we kind of reach out for. Under a stage four, where we get more into the severe drought, there are some mandatory things that the state can do. And then there's also local ordinances that some municipalities have established to allow them to do that, as well as some of the public water suppliers have items in their own plans, which give them authority to be able to put restrictions on. So the agriculture industry is big in Connecticut in terms of not only products that are sold, but also tourism. People like to visit the pumpkin patches and the foliage and things like that. Do you anticipate that this will impact that industry at all? I'm sure it will. And having seen in 2020 the impacts of this, um, I definitely think it do will impact that the crops, um, you know, the tourism pieces, as you've mentioned, I think it will definitely have an impact on it if we don't receive, you know, rain over this next, you know, you know, a 30 day period. Martin Heft, we thank you for joining us for this week in Connecticut. Some good information thank here. Thank you. Thank you. Next, fact checking our exclusive Senate debate among the three Republicans running for the U.S. Senate, which jabs were true and which were not. We'll take a deep dive coming up.